on Zoom or Facebook. So we're going to start right now singing our opening chant, God is my source. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything. Yes, indeed. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're delighted that you've joined us in person or via Facebook Live or, and on Zoom. Uh, for those of you who are here in person, please be sure and um, silence your cell phones now. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. And right now, we are going to jump into prayer. How about that? So let's just get still, be still, and know right now. We know that God is right here. Spirit is right here, right where we are. God is love. God is goodness. God is whole, perfect being, divine intelligence, wisdom, so wonderful. And I know that each and every one of us is made in the image and likeness of God that we have the God qualities right within us. It is who we fundamentally are. We are this love. We are this goodness. So I know that right now, right here and now, this service is the divine activity of spirit. God is creating this and it is good. We are gathered together joyfully, joyfully creating community each and every one of us, and we are here celebrating who we are, listening to Dr. Mark as this, the message of spirit pours forth through him to us. We open and receive the message knowing that it is a great and good thing. I am so grateful for this. I am so happy to be here today. So very grateful. And I release my word into the love and law of God itself, knowing that we are all divinely blessed right here and right now. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Be still.
Please rise and join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Everybody remain standing while we sing our congregational song, Amazing Grace. be seated. So now we're going to meditate for the next five minutes. <laughs> I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's the love that I am and I will bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
midst of chaos, I see a ray of hope a coming together of unprecedented scope. A return to oneness and compassion with simple kindness is our first reaction. We're all rancor is released. This is a call to peace. There have been times when we've been tested, felt isolated, disconnected. But we are stronger than our fears And the future's brighter than it appears We can build on our common beliefs This is a call to peace It's a call to peace My sister, and we all know that there's a bond between us that we can't let go. I hear your truth, and you hear mine. We respect each other. This is a call to peace. It's a call to peace. Oh, it's a call to love. It's a call to the greatness we're all made of. It's a call to peace. It's a call to love. It's a call to peace. Welcome. I'm so happy that you are here, and if you are watching us at home, we're thrilled to have you with us as well. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about a story that I really like, Adam and Eve. Yeah, it's true. This is one of those stories that really got my attention as a kid. And so, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. So, the Bible, I think, is showing us that there is a way to freedom under divine law. Mm -hmm. So in the garden, there is the tree of life, but there is also the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then there are all these other great trees that have terrific fruit, apparently. Okay? And God gives Adam dominion over everything in the garden. Now, as I start the story, remember that Adam and Eve exist within us, right? Everybody in the Bible is an aspect of our own consciousness. So this isn't about a man and a woman in the desert or, and all that. It's about us. It's about our growth, our unfoldment. So here's this garden. It's paradise. We have dominion. And it says, of every tree of the garden, eat but not of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat from that tree, you shall surely die. 
And so this story of Adam and Eve is really one of, is the story of what we think of and what is often referred to as the fall. The fall. Life was paradise. Imagine. Matt, so, so just think about that for a second with me. Like your version of paradise. What would paradise be? So I think, hmm, all needs met, perfect health, everybody gets along. Oh my God, this is great. I love it. I love this idea of paradise. Okay, everything is paradise. Now, people have blamed Eve for centuries, okay? And I want to heal this today. I really do. I really do, because I think it is a huge error. It's misogynistic. It's wrong. Ernest Holmes said that the tree of life is our real being, and that the tree of knowledge of good and evil means the possibility of dual choice, that we could take the high road or we could take the low road. I have often taken the low road. It's the truth. I really have. Um, it means the possibility of both choices, that we can choose even that which is not for our own good. It also says that, you know, God made Eve from Adam's rib. This is also really misogynistic, okay? Can we just, like, handle that right now? I believe... Now, here's the thing, okay? So if this is the only thing you hear and you go back to sleep, it's okay. I honestly believe that Eve's choice to take the piece of fruit, <clears throat> we have often thought of it as an apple, but recent television commercials indicate that it could possibly have been a pomegranate. <laughs> I just think that's interesting. <clears throat> so I believe that what happens when Eve says yes to the forbidden fruit, that what that does is that initiates the evolution of consciousness for humanity, right? Because we can be in paradise and be completely unconscious, right? Think about that. Like, okay, everything's fine. I'm just living my life. It's all good. It's all good. Da, 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 da. <laughs> or I could be in paradise and be aware of it and be conscious of it. See, now, I believe that Adam and Eve are actually experiencing paradise unconsciously hmm? because there's, there's really only a group soul at this point. But when Eve says, yes, I'm going to try that, you know, when she makes a choice, she's starting to individuate away from the group consciousness, away from the group mind. And because, you know, only an I am, only an individual consciousness can choose to evolve, can choose to grow, can choose to have healing. A group can't do that, right? Because it all happens through individual consciousness. Eve's choice, I think, is incredibly powerful. It's almost as if to say, as if she's saying, you know what, I'm sick and tired and I'm not going to take it anymore. You know that one where you open the window and hang your head out and go, I'm sick and tired and I'm not going to take it anymore. Eve's choice is extraordinarily powerful. Hey, you know, it's like we could say, my life is good. Could I, couldn't I just be content? Couldn't I just be satisfied? Couldn't I just stay put? Possibly, that's one choice. But how many of us in our life have made a choice for growth? You know, when you make a choice for growth, for your own growth, for your own spiritual evolution, it's probably going to upset the cart. Why? Because not everybody around you is necessarily making that choice. You know, so I think we all confront this. You know, that should I grow? Should I evolve? Should I make that bold choice, the possibility of being and expressing more? Or should I just pull back and try not to create any waves? Um, when I was young, I was, um, you've heard me say this, I was an exchange student to Sweden. And I lived in Sweden for a year. I lived with a family there. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I pray for those people to this day. I really do. That they were able to put up with me as a teenager for a year, I think that they were clearly selected by the hand of God. I don't know how they did it. I really don't. So that's why I pray for them all the time. But you know, in Sweden, the rule is to, um, to fit in. This was my experience when I was young. You're supposed to fit in. You're supposed to blend. You should never draw any attention to yourself. <laughs> I mean, really, does that sound like me at all? You know? Um, I was, I, I'm sure I was incredibly uh, challenging. Um, 
But you know, I just think that there was something within me, and I think this exists in everybody, I honestly do, that was saying, there's more for me, I want to experience it. There's something within me was saying, life is bigger than this, I want, I want to experience that. I think we confront this again and again, right? I'm gonna grow, I'm gonna evolve, or I'm gonna stay where I am. Um, this is what I think our soul, this is the purpose for which our soul has incarnated. So Adam and Eve are in the garden. It's paradise. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Everything is, like we say, hunky-dory. And the serpent entices Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Eve says to the serpent, she says, oh, the Lord God has said, you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the snake's like, oh, come on, really? You're going to die from a piece of fruit? Really, Eve, you're such a drama queen, right? So it says, in the Bible, it says that Eve was beguiled. Isn't that a fantastic word, beguiled? She was charmed. She was enchanted in a deceptive kind of way. You know, and she looks at the tree and she says, you know, the fruit here is good. And so she eats and she gives it to Adam. She shares. What a wonderful consciousness. Hey, look at this great new good I found. You should have some of it too. And it says that their eyes were open to the ways of the world. They discovered themselves to be naked and tried to hide in the dress of fig leaves. Oh, figs. In January, really? I mean, fleeing from the Lord in their fright over what they had done. So, so they know they've done wrong, and now they're hiding, and God seeks them out. And he prods a confession out of Adam as to the misdeed. Eve says, the serpent beguiled me. The Lord curses the serpent above all the beasts. And the Lord tells Eve that she will conceive her children with difficulty and bear them in pain. Okay, here we are back to that misogynistic stuff again. And to Adam, he will now have to till the ground. This is, the allegory is, this is what's referred to as the fall of man. It's not meant to be taken literally, really. People have believed in their, you know, what we've done is that we have believed that our five senses are the reliable guide in life. That life is what we perceive with our five senses. Now, this is not really in alignment with the teaching of the science of mind. The science of mind is a metaphysical teaching. That means that we believe that there is a spiritual truth that is just beyond our five physical senses. And how we experience that greater truth, how we become available to that truth, how we even become acquainted with that truth, is that we close our eyes to the outer world and we open our eyes to an inner world. Right? So our five senses lead us astray again and again. They lead us away from spiritual consciousness. So we perceive with the five senses, and the things that I perceive with my five senses are all subject to error. Mm -hmm. Contrary to, to the, oh, sorry, here's a good example. Here's a good example. I'm in a parking lot recently, and I'm getting ready to pull out of the parking lot and make a right turn. And somebody behind me beeps. Now, I didn't really feel like I had the opportunity to make the turn yet. And so, in that highly evolved spiritual way I have, I'm having a reaction to this person behind me honking. And very quickly, I consider a bunch of different possibilities. Sign language, um, getting out of the car, no, that's stupid, um, just a number of different things. And, and, and so, and this is all happening very quickly, and I'm having a moment of extraordinary reaction, not response. I am seriously in reaction. And then I look up into my rear view and notice that it's somebody I know. <laughs> and they're going. And on the inside, I'm going, I'm such a bad person. I'm so glad I didn't do sign language. Oh, if I could just disappear. <sighs> what can I say? The serpent beguiled me. That was it. The serpent beguiled me. The, the, contrary to the snake's promise, we will never have mastery over the world 
through our five senses alone. See, we have to, have to, have to cultivate an inner life. You know, the snake says, oh, you're not going to die, means you cannot lose by trusting your senses. This is a lie. Trusting your senses, your senses lie. He says, your eyes shall be opened. This is a lie. The senses expose you to the outer world, not the inner world. And, she says, and he says, lastly, you shall be like gods. This is also a lie. Through your senses, you control your destiny, is what, is what the snake is offering. And that is actually not true. We don't control our destiny through our senses. So there are a couple of things that, that really stuck with me in reading the story this time. The fruit. Uh, the fruit is the knowledge of good and evil. The fruit is the possibility of experiencing duality and making a choice for something greater. When it says they did eat, what, when they ate of that tree, they appropriated that consciousness. So now they have gone from um, an unconscious paradise to now we believe that we're separate. Okay? And they hid themselves. I, I got it this time. I really did. They hid themselves. They tried to escape the consequences of spiritual law. And you know, there are just no escaping the consequences of spiritual law. And so God says, what have you done? We have to account for what we appropriate in consciousness. So our five senses, this sense consciousness, is the product of indulging in the belief in duality. Because we, we experience good and evil because we believe in good and evil, not good exclusively. This is what Ernest Holmes teaches us in The Science of Mind. We experience duality because we believe in duality. We have eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and evil every time we experience duality. But at some point, we're all Eve. We make a choice to support our own growth, our own evolution. And this is what I think the story is really encouraging us to do, to make those hard choices, and they are hard choices, for when it's time for us to take a step forward, for when it's time for us to evolve, for when it's time for us to grow that little bit more. We should not be made wrong for that choice. Absolutely not. Don't kid yourself. A life of spiritual growth, a life of any kind of growth, it's messy. Tell the truth, it is, you know? I mean, growth is a messy, messy kind of thing. We like to think, oh, I'm going to grow, but I'm going to do it all nice and tidy, you know? It's like crying. Crying's basically ugly, you know? It's just, you know, but if you're going to really do it, do it big and get the value from it. Our philosophy, our philosophy, I think, says, you know, we came here to grow. This is what your soul took an incarnation for. You didn't come here to hang out or be on the sidelines or see kind of like how it all plays out and what happens. You came here as a creative force of life to grow. And you know this. You know that you came here to deepen spiritually. You know you came here to be that person who puts more love into the world. I'm certain of that. And so what I'd like us to do now is remember that Eve was not the bad guy. Eve was actually the good guy because, because of Eve's choice, the consciousness of humanity has been able to evolve out of a kind of darkness. Yes, it was paradise, but it was an unconscious paradise. And Eve shows us that, yeah, when we make those choices, we start to move forward. So join me in consciousness now, okay? Close your eyes, bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing for a moment. And I would just ask you to connect with that part of you that, well, connect with your fundamental okayness, that part of you that's absolutely fine, it's good, it's all right, it's perfect, it's love, it's God, it's uniquely you. Connect with that part. And as we bring our awareness to the pattern of our breathing, remember with me that the highest God and the innermost God are one God. And so our breath is our pathway to our heart this morning. And so we proceed with an open, full, gracious heart, declaring for ourselves and for everyone here that, yes, we came here to grow, that our soul is on a mission of spiritual evolution, and that, yes, in fact, God has provided absolutely everything that we need for us to evolve and grow and heal and be more than we've ever been before. 
I know that this is the truth. And so we are guided by an inner light, an inner knowing, an inner truth, not the world of our five senses. So we come back again and again to the truth of God within us, that same truth that is within all people everywhere, that we are one with God. There is no opposite. That it is the Father, Mother's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, and that includes every good and perfect thing. There is no withhold in divine consciousness. So it's not like God knows what we need to do or have to be healed. God has already provided it. It's ours to say yes to that, to welcome it, to receive it in every good and perfect way. And we do. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends and parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And we know the power, the presence, the principle of God is right where they are. It surrounds them. It fills them. It fulfills them even as we speak this word. And so we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. Because on the unseen side of life, I am certain that we are all one. We are truly connected in that heart that is God. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is so, that this truth has set us free again and again and again. And with a full heart, I just release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I'm so blessed to have these incredible musicians here behind me. The wonderful spirit team, the wonderful team, and wonderful congregation. Eve has had a bad rap throughout our misogynistically written history, <laughs> but in fact, she initiated the evolution of consciousness for all humanity. Each of us is a masterpiece, a unique one of a kind. We can make our own choice, choose our own way to shine. Sometimes we grapple with spending too much time on our PCs and our apples. And from our own Garden of Eden, we can rise above. All we have in our true meaning of love Cause each of us is a masterpiece Stradivarius, a unique one of a kind We all find a special way to shine Can 
listen to that still small voice that shows up in our life. And if we follow those musings, somehow things seem to just turn out right. Whether you paint or cook or parent or strum the guitar with hope and possibility, we can all discover who we are. Each of us is a masterpiece, a unique one of a kind. We all find a special way to shine, shine, shine. Each of us is a masterpiece in our own special way. Whether you're doing it forever. a masterpiece, a Stradivarius, a unique one of a kind. We all find a special way to shine. Each of us is a masterpiece, thanks to Eve, Adam, leading the way. Have we been doing it forever? Just starting today. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Harold. And uh, Harold's music can be found at haroldpainmusic.com. Thanks again. So we have a few announcements here. Uh, let's see. Uh, if this is your first time at our church, we are delighted that you are here, and please stop by the uh, table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. Uh, there are different ways you can make donations to our church. Uh, first, you can go to nhcrs.org slash give, um, and also we have prayer with a practitioner uh, and that's available after the service here in person or on Zoom. Mark your calendars for next Sunday, January 30th at 9.45 a.m. That's the day that we will, have, uh, we will celebrate the 135th birthday of our dean and founder, Ernest Holmes, Dr. Ernest Holmes. Yes, let's thank you, Dr. Holmes. <laughs> We wouldn't be here without him, right? So this service will be rich with insights, humor, and with the music that Dr. Holmes loved, and some surprise special guests. And the and, band will be here too. Oh yeah, and our band. Next Sunday. That is something. And uh, oh, and there will be cake on the patio. Because cake, right? That's my apple. So, okay. Um, uh, Wednesday evening service with uh, uh, Reverend Sidney Steen, that's January 26th. Uh, meditation at 6.50 p.m. and the service is at 7 p.m. And Reverend Sidney's topic this week is on your marks, get set, grow. <laughs> Uh, youth Church is open on Sundays for our 9.45 a.m. service, and we welcome youth of all ages. There's the Quick Start class with Dr. Mark Vieira, and this class meets for two more Sundays, two more Sundays, today and on January 30th from 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. on Zoom only, on Zoom only. This is an introduction 
to the background and basic principles of the religious science philosophy and is a required class to become a member of the North Hollywood Church. And the cost is free. Also, uh, for use, for, for use, for, for, for all of you here uh, in the sanctuary and, you, and who got the yellow sheet, uh, just a, a note that there's an error on it and the uh, spiritual practices class starts on March 22nd, not February 22nd. So March 22nd, that's a correction. So please take note of that. Um, we have our grief support group. Uh, this group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets today on Zoom at 1 p.m. Also, we have our foundational class with Dr. Mark Vieira, uh, which starts Tuesday, February 15th, on Zoom only, on Zoom only. Uh, this 14-week life-changing class is the first in a series of Centers for Spiritual Living sponsored core curriculum courses and is open to everyone, everyone. Uh, students undertake their first formalized step in understanding the church philosophy and teaching based on prayer, meditation, affirmation, and spiritual mind treatment. And you can sign up on our website. And I will also add that this is a great way to meet other congregants because you will be interacting with them. It's really a terrific thing, and I encourage everyone to take this class, if you haven't already. Um, we would uh, like everyone also to join us in consciousness that we will be able to return to two services on Sunday, March 6th. That's our goal. <laughs> two services on Sunday, March 6th, this is what we're aiming for. So uh, yes, we will continue to Zoom, of course, and Facebook Live at our 945 service. So we will have that for the 945 service. And yes, we will have our junior church at the 945 service only. The bookstore is closed today. And uh, we have our Zoom virtual patio uh, before and after uh, the Sunday service and also the Wednesday services. And we have our Zoom meditation. That's every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. So you can visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all of our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. So there you go. There's a lot going on here, and we celebrate all of it. So please now rise and join in the peace song.
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you.